Hello everyone. This hour on Verbling, the next in my great short story series, we're going to be working on, this is part two of our second short story by Kurt Vonnegut, or part three of our of our Kurt Vonnegut stories, the third class if I'm not mistaken, but the second part of our second story. Um, so we'll be getting to the story in just a moment, but just before I begin, uh, we've got a few viewers out there, so if you want to come in, please come on in. Remember, three quick rules to help you participate in my class are, when you join the class, turn on, tune in, and open up, which means turn off your microphone when you're not speaking so we can keep the classroom as quiet as possible. And rule two is to tune in to the new words that you're going to learn once you learn them, Use them as actively as you can throughout the class. And rule three, open up to your classmates and relax. We're all here to have fun. And this is a safe and respectful place to practice your English. So when you open the notes, you see our graphic for our short stories by Kurt Vonnegut. This is a picture from the first short story, which was the um, um, Bergeron uh, what was his name? I completely just forgot. What was it? Harrison Bergeron. There you go. That was it. So we're going to be going on to the second one. And you can click on the table of contents where it says Story 2, if you want. And that will take you, let's see, I'm, I have the PDF, so my page numbers may be different. Let me just see where it starts. For me, it's on, uh-oh. Uh-oh, there we go. I lost the page. For me, it starts on page 18. And let me see if that's right on your notes. I think it's the same. Yes, 18. 18, OK. All right. So in the last class, if I remember right, we read the first two sections of the story, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Does that sound right, Yuki? I, I read it again, and now I understand. Firstly, it is difficult for me to understand, <laughs> but now I understand. Well, I was going to pick up where we left off. So, if I remember right, we read the first, the, the story is divided into, uh, between, I think it's in four sections. In between each section, there are these little stars. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we got to the second section. Yes. Is that right? That okay. Right, right. Um, All right. In previous class, we couldn't uh, finish the story. So. OK. So let's do this, because um, I think Kang is going to join us here, and Kang wasn't in the previous class. So. From what I remember, because it's been a week, <laughs> so I, my memory might not be so good. But from what I remember, Yuki, uh, bef I think before we we read until until the woman. Uh, can, can you can you give us a, just a brief summary? Because Kang okay. was Kang wasn't here, so give us just okay. a brief summary of what we've what we discovered so far in. Mm -hmm. In story number two, to be or not to be, it it a, it a story uh, taking place ta taking place in the future. Uh, in this world, uh, mm, there is no diseases. There is no uh, people live for a long time. Maybe long time, yeah, maybe. Yeah, long time, yeah. yes. Um, so there, uh, there, are often, uh, pe uh, there are often people uh, uh, age over tw 200, 300, um, but the problem is that the that, uh, that, uh, uh, population is, uh, 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 population, popla the population incre increased uh, very much, so so uh, the population is uh, limited. Uh, ah, okay. So they have so to control the population. Control, yes. The population is controlled. Uh, limit uh, the uh, population is limited 
by, for example, in America, for 40 million, 40 million people. Right. Until 40 million people. And if you want to, uh, if you want to born the child, if you want to have a child. I have it. If you want to have a child, you have to find another person, a uh, volunteer, who, 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 who would die for that for that children. Oh so, my goodness! So the number of uh, population, the number of people uh, in the country, uh, remains remains stable. stable. Yeah, yes. that's it. Okay, let, let's stop and, there just for a second. And the main character... Wait, wait. Main character. Let, let's stop there just for a second. I want to make sure that Kang is following this. Hang on one second. So, Kang, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. So, Yuki is just giving you some of the backstory that we already read in this story. Uh, if you want to open the text, just click on the link that I put in the chat window. Okay, Kang? Okay. Okay. Did you understand the summary that Yuki just did for you? Did you understand more or less the idea? Kang, are you there? Yeah, yes. Did you understand the, the summary that Yuki just did? A little, I understand a little. A little bit. Okay. Yes. So it, last Saturday, we read half of the story. And today we're going to read the second half because it's a short story, okay? Uh, okay. And Yuki is talking about the situation in this science fiction story. We're talking about the future of America where the population is controlled so that everyone can have this perfect life, let's say. It's supposed to be perfect. But the problem is for every child that's born, someone has to volunteer to die. <laughs> so they have a real, a real dilemma. Crazy world. Yes. Crazy world, exactly. Yes. Is that clear? Is the situation clear, Kang? What? Is the story clear so far? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. If there's any questions, just ask. And Sang, as well for you? You can follow on the screen, or you can click on the link in the chat window to open the document. Okay. Okay. I read the link and open the yeah document. Right. Okay. And we read half of the story, so I think we're going to begin. I think it's on line 81. Isn't that right, Yuki? We're starting around line 80, 81. 80, 81, maybe. 81. 81. So that's on page 22, and I'll show you on screen as well. That's on page 22, if that's where we are. I uh, think, I think we, we, we need to explain about uh, the situation uh, surrounding uh, characters in this story. Yes, uh, absolutely. One, I just of, to... one of the main characters is a young man. Uh, he, he will have a child. But uh, but uh, unfortune of him is that uh, there will be three children. How to say three? Triplets. 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 So he he had to find three three people who who would die for for him children. So it's he's got to find he's got to find three people that are that are that are willing to volunteer to die so that he can have triplets. Is that right? Is that right, Yuki? He's got to yes. find three volunteers. Three. Yes, he he young man uh, ha, have, has to uh, find those three volunteers who who would die for for <laughs> his children for his Sound, children. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Sang, that's that's the situation we're reading about in this science fiction story. Is that clear so far? Well, Sang? What? What? Uh, what? What? Uh, mean? Is the situation clear in the story so far? The one that Yuki was describing. 
Uh, I just cash some work. Uh, I some work from UK and UK has said that uh, there are three uh, people uh, who volunteer uh, to and after that uh, they die. So in, exactly. In, yes. in this in the story, if you have children, if you have children, uh, you, children. Have to, you have to find people willing to die because uh, the population is not permitted to get bigger. Uh, so in this science fiction story, so the dilemma we're reading about is a man in a maternity hospital, the hospital where you have babies, in the maternity hospital and he's facing this dilemma because his wife is going to have triplets. Triplets means three identical babies. Two are twins, uh, three are triplets. Uh, sorry, uh, John. Uh, it, so, so it, it, uh, is crazy, it is about crazy world in the future. Understand? Yeah. If yes, we, yes. Uh, uh, population uh, is very. Uh, there are many population. That there, there are big population. So population have to be uh, remain stable. So if you have a child, yeah, your wife is. Uh, um, uh, if you have your wife have a child, yeah. You have to find another person, another volunteer, uh, who who would die for your children. Understand? <laughs> difficult. So, it's it's a it's it's just a story. It's not real. <laughs> it's not not a real story. A story. Okay, so uh, can the and teacher, uh, and yes? teacher, I have one question. Uh, sure. You talk. Uh, Three uh, triple children uh, willing to die are uh, are one of them uh, willing to die? No, no, no. Regular uh, yeah, your children will, will die if you cannot find uh, another people who who do die um, instead of your child. Well, hang on a second. Let's make sure this is clear. Sang, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. To keep the population under control yes for every new child yes some volunteer must die uh. in the story the problem in the story is that yes. one character has not one not two but three children ready to be born so he must find three adults who volunteer to die. That's the problem we're reading about in the story. Clear? Okay, I'm clear. Okay, very good. Okay, so, I got it. so we're going to start reading the second half of the story on page 22. You can look at the screen or you can click on the link in the chat window and you can open the document in your computer or you can download it. We're, we're going to start with uh, where it says 80, we're going to start with line 81 and actually so I want you, we're going to all take turns reading but I want you to follow along uh, as we read, okay? So I'll start us off from 81 to 88 and then Yuki you take the next page and then Kang and then Sang and we'll go around, okay? And any questions, just stop and ask. So let me start us off here on page, on page 2280, 81. By the way, just a quick point. The story takes place in the hospital, and so far we've met the man who's going to have the kids, and the man is in the waiting room of the hospital where right. there's another person who has been... Uh, hired to paint uh, a mural, uh, a painting on the wall. And that man uh, encounters a woman, she's from the government, and he has to paint her picture in the mural. So, so far we've had three or four characters, but basically the main characters are the man who's going to have the kids, the painter, and the woman from the government. Uh, who's going to be painted. So that's where we left off in the story. One last point. 
the title of the story, To Be or Not To Be, is the phone number that you call when you volunteer to die. <laughs> so, so they're talking about this. You know, when you're not when you're not sure if you if you say okay, that's enough, I'm going to die. You dial the phone number, which sounds very much like the famous line in Shakespeare when Hamlet is holding up mm -hmm. the skull and he says, "To be or not to be, that is the question." When he's contemplating his life. Okay, I'm going to start us off on 81. The painter thumbed his nose at the orderly. The orderly is a hospital worker. When I decide it's time to go, he said, it won't be at the sheep dip. A do-it-yourselfer, eh? said the orderly. Messy business, Grandpa. Why don't you have a little consideration for the people who have to clean up after you? The painter expressed an obscene, an obscenity. Sorry. The painter expressed with an obscenity his lack of concern for the tribulations of his survivors. The world could do with a good deal more mess, if you asked me. So the painter is talking about the fact that he doesn't agree with, with euthanasia. He doesn't agree with people volunteering to kill themselves because it's too neat and clean. So people should, if they're going to have to do it, they should do it themselves, and it should be messy. And people should see how ugly it really is. I think that's what the painter is trying to say. Okay, Yuki, why don't you pick it up on 89 on page 23? Okay. The, old, the orderly laughed, laughed and moved, moved on, waffling, waffling uh, with the father, mum, mumbled something without raising his head, and then he fell silent again. A coarse, for, formidable woman strolled into a waiting room on spike heels, her shoes, stockings, trench coat, back, back and over, she, over she's cap were all purple. The purple, the purple the painter called a color of grapes on the judgment day. The medallion on her purple ma masset, masset back was a seal of the service, service division of the Federal Bureau of Termination. Wait a second. Uh, Wait a second. Bureau. Bureau. Ah, sorry. Federal yeah, Bureau, Bureau. Federal Bureau of Termination. A uh, eagle perched on, on the turnstile. A uh, woman. Turnstile is the thing you have in the metro. The turnstile prevents people from entering without paying. It's the, it's uh, the like the door of the metro. The auto automatic uh, ticket. Yeah. You, you. Autom Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Towns. A woman had a lot of facial hair and a mistake of mustache. Mustache. Actually, mustache. A mistake of mustache. In fact, a. In fact, a curious. In fact, a curious thing about the gas chamber host hostesses. Gas chamber hostesses was that no matter how lovely and feminine they were when recruited, then they all sprouted mustaches with mustaches with five years or so or so. Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> somehow, somehow it changes. No, it why changes woman? them somehow. Woman, I don't know why. Why woman sprout 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 mustaches? I don't know, Yuki. I don't know. Is, is, this, is this where I'm, I'm supposed to come? She said to the painter. A lot of, would depend on what your business was, he said. You aren't about to have a baby, aren't you? Aren't you? Are you? Ah, sorry. <laughs> uh, you, aren't about to, you, you aren't about to have a baby, are you? They told me I was supposed to pose for some picture, she said. My name's Lo Leola Duncan. She waited. Dun Duncan. Duncan. Leola Duncan. She waited. Okay. You... So, so just to be clear for Kang and Sang, right now the painter 
in the waiting room of the hospital who is standing in front of the man whose name is Wailing. He's the father. Uh, he, she, he, he meets the person that he has to paint in the mural. Mm -hmm. And guess where she's from? Guess where she's from? It says she's in 96. She is from Federal Bureau of Termination. Right. She's part of the government agency that has to kill people. Yes. She, okay, so she's a work, she's the job is killing people uh, who uh, uh, volunteer people uh, killing people who who want to die for for that for the baby. That's it. Okay, let me just ask Kang, do you feel comfortable reading, or do you think this is too difficult? Uh, of, of course, it is difficult, but I am. Well, wait, 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 but let me ask. Wait, I was just asking Kang if he wants to read. Oh, Kang. Yeah. Do you feel I comfortable do. reading? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, why don't you try 107 to 111, okay? And oh, okay. let's see how it let's see how it goes. I'll help you if you need help, okay? Yes. So try it. Go ahead. And you dunk people he say said what she said? Skip it. He said as sure is your beautiful picture. He said looks just like heaven or something. Right. So who's talking to who? Who's talking to whom in this little dialogue, Kang? Do you know do you understand who's talking to whom? Uh, who she, is who is the woman? Uh, Remember, re remember, remember, right, right, the painter, he's the man, and the woman uh, is the one from the government. Ah, uh, okay. Right? All so, right. and so the man, the painter, he's very rude. He's uh, very angry and rude. So he's making a stupid joke. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even understand his joke, honestly. And then he says, skip it. Well, it he means he's never, just never ironic. Heard. Yeah, he's being not ironic. He's not, a, not, a, not ironic, but sarcastic. Sarcastic. Sarcasm. Yeah. I'm saying rude because I think it's an easier word to understand. I didn't know if they know sarcastic. But yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. He's being sarcastic. He's, he's yeah. kind of. Um, well, it's a little bit rude to be sarcastic. <laughs> yes, uh, sarcastic, yes, yes. Okay, Sung, why don't you take from 112... I think uh, he have a complaint of this word. I think he's, he, he wants the truth, maybe. Uh, and yes. he, he, he's forced to paint an ideal picture in reality, literally and figuratively. And I think he wants to have things more realistic and people should see what's really happening in front of them. I think that's what he wants. But I, I haven't I haven't read the whole story. I've just read as much as you actually. So I don't know the ending. Song, why don't you take okay. one twelve down to one twenty? Let's see how it sounds. Okay. Uh or something, said the painter. He took a list of names from his uh smock pocket. Smock smock pocket. Smock pocket. Smock is the clothes you wear when you're painting. It's the it's the clothes you wear to protect your real clothes. Painters wear a smock over their clothes. So it's extra clothes to protect you from the paint. Okay. Dun 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 can dun can dun can he said scanning the list. Yes, here you are. Yeah entitled to be Im immortalized 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 see any fileless body here you like me to stick your head on uh, we got a few choice on one left one left see study the Miro Bleakly. Bleakly. Yeah. Bleakly. 
Gi, she said, they are on the same to me. I don't know anything about art. Yeah, hang about on just a second. Hang on just a second. So, she, the woman, the woman from the government says, "Gee, that means mm -hmm. she's thinking." Gee, she said, "They're all the same to me. I don't know anything about art." <laughs> right? So she sounds like she's she's a little she's a little dumb maybe. Um, and the painter is being very sarcastic with her because all the all the bodies in the picture look the same and all he has to do is stick a head on the body. So in other words, there's nothing realistic, there's nothing personal. It's, it's all very mechanical, the, the picture that he has to paint. So he seems kind of angry about that. And she doesn't seem to know the difference. She says, oh, I don't know anything about art. She just does her job, right? So just to make sure, when he says G, she, that's her thinking. That's what that means. Okay, and then she goes on to say, a body's a body, huh? He says, a body's a body, huh? All righty. As a matter of fine art, I recommend this spot here. He indicated a faceless figure of a woman who was carrying dried stalks to the trash burner. Well, Leora, Leora Duncan, that's more the disposal people, isn't it? I mean, I'm in service. I don't do any disposing. <laughs> the painter clapped his hand and mocked a light. Clapped his hands together. You say you don't know anything about art, and then you prove it in the next breath that you know more about it than I do. Of course, a sheath sheath carrier is, is wrong for a hostess. A snipper, a pruner, that's more your line. Line means job in this case. That's more your job. He pointed to a figure in purple who was sawing a dead branch from an apple tree. How about her, he said. You like her at all? So Yuki, why is he suggesting that she become a pruner rather than the, uh, the one carrying the dead grass to the burner? Be uh, what because painter... It painter is very sarcastic. Painter recommend to uh, recommend recommend her to to be to be a, a woman who uh, who who are carrying dried stalks to the tra trash burner because because um, I well, think painter. Hang on a second. Hang on one second. One second. Remember, she rejects that idea because she says that doesn't seem like my job and he says become a pruner a snipper do you know what that means pruner snipper do you know what that means, means uh, it, it uh, cutting cutting uh, right twigs twigs yeah 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 so cutting off cutting, cutting off the new when you when you prune a plant uh. you cut off the new Parts of the plant, not the so old parts. Pruna, In other words, before the pruna indicate yeah. that that to killing uh, baby, yeah, killing uh, killing uh, no no exactly. kill, not baby, <laughs> killing killing people, killing all the people, all the all the people, all the unnecessary. No, not necessarily. People. No pruna. Not necessarily all people because. But the pruna. Because when you prune a plant. You, 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 you can take off unnecessary twigs, yeah? Exactly. So unnecessary I, could be old and unnecessary could be new. Mm. There's no distinction. But ah, the reason okay. is if you prune if you prune a tree and there's new branches, the tree will get bigger. But if the tree is a metaphor for the population, mm. and population is not allowed to get bigger. You have to cut off the new branches, you know. In fact, we have an expression in English, to nip it in the bud. Yes. The expression, to nip in the bud, which means take something that was just born and destroy it before it can grow. To nip is the same as to prune. To nip in the bud. And bud is the name of a new flower. It becomes a bud, and then it blossoms. To nip in the bud. So it means you cut off the flower right when it first uh, develops, let's say. And so that's the metaphor. 
Listen. Oh no, you 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 don't throw out old things. You're killing <laughs> anything new. You're a pruner. So he's being very sarcastic. <laughs> Um, why don't you continue there, Yuki, on 129? Okay. Uh, Gosh, she said, and she blushed and be, be, became humble. Humble. That 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 put me right next to Doctor Hint. Hint. That upset you. That that upset you. She he said. Good gra good gravy. No, she said. It's. It's just such an honor. Oh, you admire him, eh? eh? <laughs> he said. Who doesn't admire him? Eh? Eh? Ah, sorry. Eh? He said. Who doesn't admire him? She said. Worshipping, worshipping the portrait of Hit. It was a portrait of tanned, white haired, om, om, pi, omnipotent. Oh, right? nip. Omnipotent. Yeah, omnipotent. 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 Zeus, to to a hundred and forty years old. Who doesn't admire him? Who who doesn't admire him? She said again. He was re responsible for setting up a be the very first gas cham chamber in Chicago. Nothing would please me more. She said the painter. Than to put put to next to him for all time, sewing of a limp, sewing of a limp that strikes you as a, a, appropriate. That is kind of like what I do," she said. She was demure, demure, correct? Demure, 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 demure about what he what she did. What she did was to make people comfort comfortable while she killed them. <laughs> and okay, <clears throat> so that, that that's the end of that's the end of the next part. So let me just make sure it's clear, Kang and Sang. If you have any questions, just ask. But just to summarize, the woman for the government is is part of the government that kills people, and she's getting her picture painted in an official picture, a mural, on the wall of the hospital. And the man who's going to have the triplets is watching the painter and this woman have this discussion. And the woman is a little, well, maybe she's a little dumb <laughs> because she doesn't understand the sarcasm from the painter. Uh, she, maybe, because she seems to use a lot of silly expressions like, good gravy and gee. So she's kind of sounds like she doesn't she's quite understand. And she's very um, honest to, to, to her job, to government. To yeah, she, doesn't, she, she also doesn't seem to be aware she, that she's killing she people. She respects like, the founder of this system, this uh, founder of the ch chamber. <laughs> she, she has great admiration for the guy who set up gas chambers around the country. So, so in the future, Dr. people Heath. have the priority is a little bit mixed up, it sounds like. I think that's what Kurt Vonnegut is getting at. Mm -hmm. So, um, Kang, do you, want to, do you want to take the next two paragraphs for us? What number? Uh, we're on 144 to 149. Uh, okay. Uh, and why Riora Duncan was posing for her portrait into the waiting room bounded Dr. Hit himself? Bounded he was, means, means to enter, but with a lot of presence to enter quickly with a lot of energy so he walked into the waiting room oh. okay okay he was seven feet tall and he boomed uh, boomed with, with important accomplishments and the uh, joy of living where Miss Duken Miss Duken he said, 
and he made a joke. What are you doing here? He said, this isn't where the people live. This is where they can in. come in. Yeah. Do you, do you understand his joke, Kang? Uh, what is the job of the woman? What's her job? What does she do for a living, Kang? I don't know. She kills people for a living. That's her job. Are you rich? She's an executioner. Ah. So the joke is the director of the hospital comes in and says, where are they, by the way? Where are they? They're in the maternity ward. They're in the maternity ward. They're in the place where people have babies. So they're in the maternity ward. And the director says, oh, Miss Duncan, what are you doing here? This is not where people leave, where they die. It's where uh, people come in, where they enter. So he's making a joke. Do you think it's a funny joke, Yuki? I, th it, it, I think it is an unsuccessful joke. I think it's not a very good joke. <laughs> Son, why don't you take... So she's killing you... people who called to this number. Why, Son, why don't you take... Let's take the rest of the page here. So why don't you pick up from 150 to 160? Okay, Sang? Okay. Go for um, it. We uh, we're going to be in the same picture together. She says uh, shyly. 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 Good, said Dr. Hitz. Uh, Heartily. 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 And say, isn't that some picture? I sure am honored to be in it with you. She says, let me tell you, he said, I'm honored to be in it with you, uh, with our woman like you. It's wonderful world. Uh, we got wouldn't be possible. He's, he's, uh, he's sal saluted. Saluted. He, sa he saluted her and moved towards the door. Uh, that led to the delivery room. Yes, what was just born? He said. I can, she said. Triplets, he said. Triplets, she said. Uh, she was slamming over the le legal Im implication implications? implications of triplets. Right, so the director of the hospital, the guy who's in the middle of the painting, suddenly walks in the room. He's talking to the executioner, and he's talking about how great this world is because of people like her. And then he's all excited because there's going to be triplets. But guess what? If there's going to be triplets, that means three people have to die. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so they're excited. They're excited it's about hard to find three people. <laughs> it's not going to be so easy at the same uh, time. Okay, so I want you to listen and follow along. Uh, I'm going to do the next page, and then I'm going to turn it back over to Yuki. If there's any questions, Kang or Sung, just ask, okay? So let's follow along. On 166, we're on page 27. The law said that no newborn child could survive unless the parents of the child could find someone who would volunteer to die. Triplets, if they were to all live, called for three volunteers. Do the parents have three volunteers, said Leora Duncan. Last I heard, said Dr. Hitz, they had one and were trying to scrape up another two. Scrape up means desperately trying to find. They were trying to scrape up, desperately trying to find another two. There, look on 167. I don't know, I don't think they made it, he, she said. Nobody made three appointments with us. Nothing but singles going through today, unless someone called in after I left. What's the name? Uh, Willing, said the waiting father, sitting up, red-eyed and frowsy. Edward K. Wheeling Jr. is the name of the happy father-to-be. Cool. He raised his right hand, looked at, the spot on the, 
looked at a spot on the wall, gave a hoarsely wretched chuckle. Present, he said. Chuckle is like a little laugh. Ha, ha, ha. Present. Oh, Mr. Welling, said Dr. Hitz. I didn't see you. The Invisible Man, said Welling. Everyone makes really bad jokes in the future. They just phoned me that your triplets have been born, said Dr. Hitz. They're all fine. So is the mother. I'm on my way in to see them now. Yuki, take over yes. for us. Fure said to said to waffling empty emptily. You don't sorry very you don't you don't sound very happy, said Doctor Hitz. What mind my shoot with wouldn't be happy? What? What man? What man in my shoes wouldn't be happy? Said Waffling. Waffling? Welling. Welling, sorry. Welling. She, he gestured, she gestured with, his hand, his, with his hand to, to symbolize carefree simplicity. All I have to do is pick out which one of the triplets is going to live. Then deliver my material. Ma maternal grand ma grandfather grandfather to to the happy ho hooligan. What's the hooligan. Hooligan, hooligan is like in football. The people who make lots of noise are hooligans. Hooligan is a person who makes lots of noise and usually commits a crime. Someone who is loud, someone who is a little dangerous is a hooligan. What does the happy mean? hooligan? In this sentence, is happy hooligan. The happy hooligan is one of the names of the places where they kill people. They ah. have all they have all these chamber. Yeah, yeah. They have chamber. all these euphemisms for the chambers. Ah, I see. I see. Uh, and come and come back here with uh, with a receipt. Okay. Yeah. So, Kang Sang Yuki, do you think Welling is being sarcastic or do you think he's really happy? Yeah, no, I think uh, uh, you mean father, yeah. The, yeah, Welling, the father. Do you think uh, Welling is not happy? Not happy so at all. He <laughs> have to kill the children, newborn children, uh, two of one, two of them. Right. Yes. And not just the children; he has to kill someone else. But uh, Doctor doc, Hint doesn't matter about it. Yeah? But wait a second; he doesn't just have to kill two children; he has yes. to kill someone else too. Doesn't he? In order, to, in order for one triplet to live, he has to kill who, Yuki? He has to kill two of the children. Two of the and? Ah, uh, 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 father. father. Yeah, is his a, father. Father is a, is a sole volunteer for for the for for his children. Yes. Right. He okay. says sad story. My maternal grandfather. That means ah, his his wife's father has volunteered to die so that one of the triplets can live. So he couldn't find a volunteer at all except to he himself. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> okay, keep going, Yuki. One eighty six. Doctor Hit became rather severe with wedding. To a to a coward. That tower. means to stand above, like yes. a tower, to stand above. Towered over, over him. You don't believe in population control. Dr. Welling, he said. Doctor? Dr. Welling? Uh, sorry, Mr. Welling, right. he said. I think it's perfectly keen, said Welling, totally. Would you like to go back to the good old days when the population of the Earth was 20 billion? About about to become forty billion, then eighty billion, then one hundred and sixty billion. Sixty billion. Do you know what what the drop droplet is? What droplet droplet? Droplet droplet. I guess. Droplet. Do you know what a droplet is, Mister Welling? Said Hit. What what a droplet means? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. No idea. <laughs> let's yeah. let's find out. I don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, nope. Said uh, we waving sulkily. Sulkily, sulkily, because if you if you sulk, 
sulk is like what a child does, like a young child. If you say something the child doesn't like, the child's like, you know, gives you a dirty look and sulks. Sulk, yeah? Yeah, like give you a dirty look and... Sulky child. Exactly. So, wild exacting like a child, a little bit. Not, not, not in good mood, yeah? Not in a good mood, right. Okay. A drupelet, drupel, a drupelet, Mr. Welling, is one of the little nobs, one of the little, ah, okay, uh, this is meaning, one of the little pulpy grains of blackberry, said Dr. Hitz. Without population control, human beings would now be packed on the surface of this old planet like drupets on the blackberry. Think, think of it. Welling continued to stare at the same spot on the wall. In the year 2000, said Dr. Heath, before a scientist stepped in and laid, laid down on the law, there wasn't even enough drinking water to go around, and nothing to eat but she weed. And still people insist on, on their right to repro reproduce they produce like jack 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 rabbits, correct? Jack rabbits. Ja uh, jack rabbits. And they are yeah, right. Bunnies. Bunny. Bunny. Little bunnies. <laughs> rabbits. And they are right. If possible, it's possible to live forever. I want those kids, said Welling quietly. I want all three of them. Of course you do, said, said Dr. Hitz. That's only humor. <laughs> I don't want my grandfather to die either, said, said Wailing. We Nobody really happy about taking a close relative to the cat box, said Dr. Hitz gen gently, sympathetically. I wish people wouldn't call it that, said Leona Duncan. What? said Dr. Heath. I wish people wouldn't call it a cat box and think like that, she said. It gives people a wrong impression. By the way, do you know what a cat box is? Cat box, cat box is uh, this ch chamber, no? Yeah, but... no. What is, what, is, what is a real cat box? I think they're trying to say litter box. Ah. You know, the toilet for the cat? Ah. <laughs> ah, it's a toilet for cat. I think that's what they're trying to say. Where you put unwanted things. I think they're trying to say that. Oh. So they're, they're giving the name to the, to the chamber, the death oh, chamber. The name of cha the, the name, name of chamber. Cat it's basically box. the cat box, the litter box. I, I think that's what they're trying to say. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so we're having a little moral debate. The father is not happy with what he has to do or what, what he's forced to do. And the director of the hospital has come in and he's trying to say, you know, hey, would you rather have it the other way? Where the where the earth is so overpopulated that no one can eat and everyone is miserable and everyone is squeezed together like blackberries or whatever he said blueberries, um, would you rather have it that way? Mm. And the father doesn't really want to hear that. So let me just we're running out of time. So let me just pick it up there at the bottom, two thirteen. You're absolutely right," said Doctor Hitz. "Forgive me." Uh, he corrected himself gave the municipal gas chambers their official title, a title no one ever used in conversation. I should have said Ethical Suicide Studios, he said. That sounds so much better, said Le Leora Duncan. This child of yours, whichever one you decide to keep, Dr. Mr. Welling, said Dr. Hitz, he or she is going to live on a happy, roomy, clean, rich planet, thanks to population control. In a garden like, in a garden, like that mural there. Mm -hmm. And he, he, she shook his head. Two centuries ago, when I was a young man, it was, it was a hell that no one could last another 20 years. Now, centuries of peace and plenty, centuries of peace and plenty, 
stretched before us as far as the imagination cares to travel. He smiled luminously. The smile faded as he saw that Welling had had just drawn a revolver. <laughs> what's what's a revolver? A, pist a pistol. A, pi a gun. A gun. He pulled yes. out a gun. A pistol. Sung, Kong, what do you think is going to happen now? What do you think is going to happen next? Before we read, what do you, what's your guess? Any guess? Any questions? I think uh, that story will finish uh, peaceful. <laughs> you think it will finish peacefully? Really? Yeah. He's, he's just, <laughs> the guy just took out a gun. I hope, I hope so. <laughs> but but I, I don't think so. <laughs> I, I hope so. But usually when they pull out a gun, that's usually not, not a good kill. sign. He will kill. <laughs> Father, kill, kill the doctor, maybe. No? You, th you think so? I think so. Or maybe, or maybe he's going to hold them hostage until he gets what he wants. Doctor and woman, maybe. Two. two. Yeah, two but I'm people. saying maybe he, instead he of... He will maybe. kill two people for their children. For him children. <laughs> no? Or, may, or maybe he will hold them hostage. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, so Kang, why don't you take 227 down to the bottom of the page, which is 232. Oh, okay. 220, sorry, revolver, yeah, 227, yeah. Wearing shot after hits dead. Oh, bitch. <laughs> oh, that was fast. <laughs> I can't, I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. That was very yeah. fast, okay. There's a room for one, a great big one, he said. And then he shot Leora Duncan. Oh, he, on death. he said to her as uh, she fell. And she fell. fell. She fell. There's room for two. <laughs> and he shot himself, making room for all three of his children. Nobody came running, nobody seemingly, uh, seemingly he, he, uh, heard the shot. Keep going, one more line. 233-234. Okay. The printer sat on the top of his step ladder, uh, looking down reflectively on the story scan. Scene. Uh, scene. Right. Uh, like, 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 a, like the scene from the movie. Like a scene from the movie. Looking down on the scene. Looking down on the situation that just happened. So... What does the ending this story have? <laughs> okay. I don't know. We're not even done, and we're, we're, everyone's dead already. We're not even the story's not even over. Okay, okay. Uh, Stung, why don't you pick up from two thirty six to two forty two? Okay. Uh, the banter bonder, uh, the mouthful puzzle, puzzle, up like demanding to be born, and uh, once born, demanding to the to the fruitful, to be to, um, fruitful, to be fruitful, to multiply and to live as long as possible, to do on that on a very small um, planet that would have uh, to last forever. On the answer, does the banter could think up uh, were dream, even dreamer, surely, than a cast box. A happy hooligan, an easy go. He talk of war. He talk of la plague. 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 He talk of starvation. So, the painter is the only one left alive in the maternity waiting room, 
and he's starting to think about life and death <laughs> because he just watched everyone get killed. <laughs> and, he, and he seems to be thinking, you know, there really is no solution because he's thinking, you know, everyone wants to be born. And when they want to be born, they want to multiply. And when they want to multiply, we have a father yeah. also died. He, he, suicide. he committed suicide. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. The Sorry. father, the father killed himself. So now there's room for all three babies. Oy, oy, oy. Plus, he got revenge because he was not happy about the person who made the law in the beginning or made the rules. So he got his revenge as well. So we're left with the painter who's left to think about uh, the situation there, right? And the th the painter is thinking, you know, as bad as the gas chambers are. It, it would be infinitely worse without them. <laughs> so the painter who's sarcastic... The painter was sarcastic before, but now he seriously thinks about uh, plague, starvation. Exactly. <laughs> the <crisis> of our, <laughs> our earth. <laughs> he, seems to have, he seems to have had a change of heart in some way. I'm yes. not sure. So, picking up from 233, let me just go to the end of the page here. He knew he would never paint again. He let the paintbrush fall to the drop cloths below. And then he decided he had had a, about enough of life in the happy garden of life, too. And he came slowly down from the ladder. He took Welling's pistol, really intending to shoot himself. But he didn't have the nerve. He wasn't able to do it. And then he saw the telephone booth in the corner of the room. He went to it dialed a well-remembered number, 2B or not 2B. <laughs> Federal Bureau of Termination, said the warm voice of the hostess. How soon can I get an appointment, he asked, speaking very carefully. We could probably fit you in, in uh, late this afternoon, sir, she said. It might even be earlier if we get a cancellation. All right, said the painter. Fit me in, if you please. And he gave her his name, spelling it out. Thank you, sir, said the hostess. Your city thanks you, your country thanks you, your planet thanks you. But the deepest thanks of all is from future generations. And that is the story of to be or not to be. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it must have been very, very interesting. <laughs> I like it very much. <laughs> but, but it's a crazy story. <laughs> and it, and he says all of that and it's and it's only in it's two hundred and fifty nine lines and it's about what six pages long. And it's he says yes. an awful lot. I don't think it it's such a such a short story. It it's a, it it include includes many dramas, so I think uh, it looks like I I read a long story. <laughs> very, how to say, um, content is very, um, very rich. There are rich, rich contents in in short story. Does it surprise you <laughs> that the, that that line? Uh, remember the line after he pulls the revolver, right? Let me just go back there for a second. Uh, let me see where it is. Uh, da, 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 heaven killed him, blah, blah, implications. Wait, wait, I'm just trying to find the revolver line. Where was it? Truplet, cat box. I went back too far. There are full of ir ironies. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Wait, hang on just, just a is second. Is it a comedy? Tra tra tragic comedy, maybe. Um, hang on one second here. In line 227. So, 226 and 227. Actually, let me put it on the screen one more time here. Okay, in line 226 and 227. So, 226. The smile faded as he saw... This is Dr. Hicks, right? The smile faded as he saw that Welling had just drawn a revolver. Line 227. Welling shot Dr. Hicks dead. There's room for one. A great big one, he said. And then he shot Leora Duncan. It's only death, he said to her as she fell. There, room for two. And then he shot himself, making room for all three of his children. Nobody came running. 
Does it surprise you how quickly the events change in the story? Does that just seem surprising? Just the four lines. Yeah. yeah. Or, almost what? all, all uh, characters in, in this story has died in <laughs> four lines. And the, only the painter remain, <laughs> left. <laughs> and why, he, <laughs> why do you think it happens in four lines? I mean, do you think do you think that another author would have done the same thing? Would another author have killed everyone in four lines? Yeah, I I hadn't read such a story, such a such a such a su suddenly change in the story. Some why do you think the change is so sudden? What do you think the purpose is of of giving us this quick change in events? Mm, because it, it's a short, short story. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, in the end of the story, there is a big, there are often, uh, there are often a big change in short, short story. So do you think it's just because it's a short story that uh, it has no, to be so not, abrupt? Not just because it's a short story. I think uh, after the the after I want to. Um, Want to give a shock to to readers. So it's really abrupt because it's a it's a we're not expecting it. It's a shock when we read it. Mm. I, I I have another theory too. I think this is meant to be a comedy, and I think that the best jokes are the ones that you're not expecting. And even though it's dark, you know, it's not a happy comedy. It's a dark comedy. I think that he's delivering the the shocking thing exactly like the punchline of a joke. Yes, you know? uh, jokes. Uh, uh, despite of, of such a sad story, it uh, uh, comedy uh, jokes works in, in in even in this uh, sad sad lines. Yeah, all, all four t four people died, but it's a kind of black jo black joke, and it it. It works very lively. Yeah, I think I think that's why it's so abrupt because he's using he's using the the format of a joke. He's using the style of a joke to deliver something that's not a joke. So it's kind of a joke and not a joke at the same time. But he's using he's using the the form of a joke. You know, so it's this weird it's this weird mixture. And so also, is he trying to say that socialism is evil? Or is he trying to say that there's no solution to to natural, you know, evolution because we keep getting bigger of our is he trying to say life is hopeless or is he trying to make a satire out of socialism? I mean, what's he trying to say to us? <laughs> because there doesn't seem to be any real solution. There doesn't seem to be any hope. Yes. Uh, such a trait of Bonegat, uh, I feel such a trait of Bonegat. Also, I also when I re I, I I read the, his another story, uh, famous story, Garp's World. Uh, he, he he Bonegat has a very cool vision of the for the life. Uh, cool cool vision of the life uh, to the life. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, at the same time, he has very, very good uh, sense of humor, right. good, good sense of comedy uh, jokes. So uh, such a balance between jokes and uh, very cool vision, <laughs> the real, realistic, realistic vision of our life to our life. Such, such a very good balance, I think. Good and, and what do you think the significance is of the gas chambers? Think about when this was written in 1962. So America entered the war in 1941. So this was probably written in 41 and published in 60. Uh, written in 61, probably published in 62 or something like that. But the point is, it is precisely 20 years after the war when this is written, like an anniversary. Oh. So, it's, and remember, of course, in the beginning, people didn't know about the gas chambers. I mean, they, they might not even, even have been used in 41. It's hard to say. At the time of the Cold War? 
it is, uh, this story is written in the time of Cold War, no? In the, in the height of the Cold War, yeah. Because this was the year of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Cuba Crisis? Just yeah. before, yeah, just before the Cuban Missile Crisis. So, uh, yeah, I think Cuban Missile Crisis was, was it 62 or 63? I, I can't remember when Kennedy was killed. I think it was 63. So it was probably 62 or early 63 that the Cuban Missile Crisis was happening. So it was escalating at this point. And they were sending... Yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know the exact chronology. So people there, uh, the, people then tend to be tend to be be uh, how to say tend to be um, not op optimistic, uh, pessimistic. Yeah. Well, yeah, because Hiroshima. To the world, uh, yes, yes. Hiroshima and Nagasaki happened. After Hiroshima and Nagasaki, now Cuba is in crisis. And the Cold War in, in it, it's very um, in, in the middle of cold, cold, it is the middle in the middle of Cold War. Yes, uh, and remember when after Hiroshima, uh, the American government said that there was no radiation, that it was not dangerous. <laughs> they said all kinds. Of, they said all kinds of crazy things. First, it wasn't publicized. America then, did a, a, a lot of experiment, nuclear experiment in this time. Yeah? Exactly. Yeah, and some of it on the population of Japan. Yeah, I, I ran some. <laughs> mm, yes, yes. And they still do. They still do experiments out in like Puerto Rico and places like that. They still do. They they have not just there. It's not so. It's not like before. Before they were dropping nuclear bombs and islands in the South Pacific and all kinds of crazy things. It's, I don't think it's happening quite like that anymore, uh, or underground explosions. But it's really not safe. But people had then then people had a great hope, hope, great hope to the nuclear energy. Then, yeah, yeah. no, y yeah, yeah. And uh, that hasn't gone so well either. Now, now no, nobody, <laughs> nobody believed that. But, but then, in well, 1970s, after Fukushima, maybe no one has much hope for nuclear yes, energy yeah, either. Of, of course, after Chernobyl, <laughs> and after now, after Fukushima, yes, <laughs> nobody said that. But, but then, 1970s. Well, I'll tell you what. We can talk. Uh, I'd like to talk about both stories. Um, but I'd like to make a class where we, we can discuss these and maybe we can learn a little bit more about Kurt Vonnegut as well. Uh, so we're going to stop here because we're a bit over time, but I'm going to try to find another hour and I can post it for you in Google Plus and in Facebook. I'll try to find another hour where we can discuss both of the stories and get a little more background on Kurt Vonnegut as well uh, because we didn't really have a lot of time to talk about them. Thank okay. you very much for giving us to read such a good story. I like it very much. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Kang, if there's any questions, just feel free to ask. I don't know if this was too difficult for you or not. I don't know if it was yeah. easy to understand. It was very difficult to understand. The... Kang, well, I'm sorry, but it is, it's a very interesting story. <laughs> yeah, very I recommend you very much. <laughs> If well, I, if you 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 read uh, for, uh, to the top of the end, <laughs> maybe you'll understand. It's well, very well. Let's do this, Kang. Let's do this. Let me let me write a summary of the story and post it for you in the notes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so if you if you let me let me share my screen for the notes. Hold on a second. So if you open the link to the notes, <clears throat> when you open up the notes you get to this page and you'll see Great Short Stories 5, 2 by Vonnegut, right? And then you go down and the first story is Harrison Bergeron, that's story number one. And you'll see lots of notes there. I didn't do that for story two yet. But, yes. but if, okay, I think but it I, is very difficult to understand if you don't read the first part of this story. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I too. recommend you to, to read from beginning. But besides that, I'm gonna I, I will create a summary for you. Just like I have a summary of the first story, I'll go and create a summary. In fact, maybe I can just put the link there right now so I don't forget. Hang on a second. Uh, 
give me just a minute. Summary of of to be r not to be. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little link so that next time I open this, I don't forget. There it is. And after class, I'll write up a little summary. So read the summary first, and then go back and read each part of the story. There's four parts. If it's difficult, just read one part at a time uh, because it, it may be too much information. But read the summary first to get the overview, to get the general idea, and then go back and maybe read one part per day so that you can follow along. Not, it's, remember, this is an advanced story. It's not for beginners, so it's not easy. But I think you can understand it. Okay? So the story is on page, um, it starts on 18, and I'll put the summary on page 32, but you can always find this on the table of contents. There we go. The table of contents is on page 2, so you can always click on the link to summary to get there quickly. In fact, let me, there we go. So you can always click on the link to summary. But I, I, I have to teach another class first, so it will be later tonight, or later tonight I'll, be, I'll do that for you, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, guys, that's it for today. If you have questions or comments, find me at any of the links in the chat window, and you can send me a message or ask questions, and I will create a follow-up to this class where we compare Harrison Bergeron to to be or not to be, and we get a little bit more background on uh, sometime next week, probably Friday. I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll take a look. Okay? Okay. So, bye Thank for you. now. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. See you in the next Thank class. Bye-bye, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you, Kang. Thank you.